Welcome to Breakthrough Ideas and Training Webinar Series. Today we are extremely fortunate to have Ricky Kalman with us today. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about Ricky and his background. First, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Evan Hackle, Chairman of, of Tortal Training. Um, you know, when doing these, I'm, I'm always really lucky with all the people I've gotten to know. And I, I've known Ricky now, I think, for about 15 years. And I, I first saw him in St. Louis because one of the companies I worked for, he was friends with the people that ran the business, and they hired him as a hypnotist. And I loved the show, and we had all these other businesses, so I kept hiring Ricky here, Ricky there. And he just, he was a marvelous entertainer. And, and a really super person we get to talking. And then one day, and I think this is about 10 years ago, he says, you know, Evan, I can do more than entertain. He says, I can help your salespeople sell more. And honestly, if he had called me up and I didn't know him, I, I would have just said, <laughs> you're a hypnotist, man. But I knew him and I said, you know what, we're going to give this a try. And we actually had him first time speak, and we had to speak to this many times after, is talk to our professional salespeople about how they can mentally prepare themselves to be more successful in sales and how they can be a, a, better, a better salesperson. And he's just really terrifically gifted at doing this. And his message is a great one. I'm going to let him talk in a second. But I also tell you that like, his book, my kid, I've had my kids read. Um, you know, my son's a professional skier, and he uses a lot of your methodology to help him be in the right frame of mind. So I, I'm really happy that, that, that Ricky is, is with us today. Now, having done that, Ricky, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you so much, Evan. It's good to see you, my friend. And yes, I think it's been about 15 years. Um, you know, it goes back to the days of doing hypnosis shows for fun, but then really making that transition to teach people how to do what I do for entertainment and how people use it in their everyday lives and really take it to the next level of self-help. Um, you know, even during the comedy hypnosis show where I change people's reality by simple suggestions, which you've seen over and over again, there's something very valid about that because if I can do that for fun, why aren't we using that same technique in our everyday lives, personally and professionally? How do, how do we hold ourselves more accountable to our thoughts? And so that's what's been my passion for all these years. I still love doing the show, and I'm still doing the show. I'm, I'm still you know, doing corporate events and special events around the world and TV shows. But the other half of what I do when I'm not doing the comedy part is, is speaking and training and teaching people what I do that they can do for themselves. You know, it's interesting. I forgot to mention this because we're doing this thing. It's sort of in series, and I really have you under two categories in my mind. One is innovation because what you do is so innovative. So, I mean, most people don't think about preparing yourself mentally to be successful. So they train people on skills, but not that skill. And I also have you under leadership, because I think what you do really is about creating the right environment from a, from a, a leader's perspective. Um, so my next question is, what makes you different than everyone else? I'm going to let you answer it, but obviously you're a hypnotist. That is certainly different. But uh, <laughs> please, just what, what does make you different than everyone else? You know, when it comes down to it, you know, if you go listen, you know, I'm a big fan of all the speakers you have. And, you know, what makes my program just a little bit different is, is it teaches people to use the techniques they hear from everybody else and then implement them and keep them active. I mean, you've got some incredible speakers on this series and are extremely motivating who I follow myself. But then what I do is then take what I've learned from them and how do I keep that information active in my mind? How do I take that script or that subconscious grocery list that one of the speakers talked about? I'm like, that's a great idea. That's perfect. I should be implementing that more often. But we all know we're human and we, we haul back at the old habits of, well, it's, yeah. it was random. It was a random thought. How do you keep that momentum, that accountability factor? So that's where I think that, you know, at the end of the day, what I offer is teaching people to keep themselves accountable and showing them the techniques to do that so they take the great inspiration that they're looking for and continually use it and adapt it in their, in their lives. That's great. So what's the number one question you get asked more than any other question? 
Right. Forget the business questions. Forget about you know, can you sell? You know, can we sell more? Can we get our clients to buy? Probably the number one question is, do I hypnotize my wife? That is the number one question of all the questions. The answer is absolutely not. I don't hypnotize my wife. So I'm just going to get that out there before you ask me. But just to be clear, yeah. don't, you know, a study of the language, have you ever? Well, she doesn't know we're married. <laughs> Does that answer your question? When she wakes up one day, she's going to realize, whose kids are these? <laughs> But, you know, Evan, I, I, I use that as a great example of how much even you kind of said, oh, hypnotist. And we all have this stereotype, I think, probably from sure. books and movies. How is hypnosis related to business? How is it related to sales or customer service or personal accountability or culture of accountability? Well, you know, if you look at this, look at it this way. I think there's been a stereotype of what the hypnotist is doing to you. And I don't think most people realize it's not the hypnotist. It's the individual. It's what your mind accepts. It frames our reality. I mean, think about it in sales. If you really look at it, sales is offering solutions. If you're buying from somebody, they're offering a solution to your problem. Not that something's wrong, but they're filling a void, helping you become more effective, more efficient. They're offering a solution. Well, in my eyes, hypnosis is nothing more than the focus of effort to influence an outcome. And I bet you, Evan, every topic that we talk about or you talk about, too, can be related to that same premise. So if you step back and you realize that, then you start to realize how powerful the technique is and that how much we should pay attention to it. You know, there's that old adage, if you think you can or you think you can't, in either case, you're right. And I, I've seen it because I practice what you talk about. I've seen it with my kids. I've seen it with other people. Okay. Um, what is hypnosis? Well, going back, I, I kind of already answered. The focus of effort to influence an outcome is my standard everyday statement. But let's really just talk about that for a quick second. It is not being asleep. It's not being unconscious. You're giving yourself personal time to relax. And during that relaxation technique, you're allowing your mind to clear itself from other distractions. Fair enough? So oh, Absolutely. If you're reading an email over and over again and you're distracted because you have to go back and read it again and again, you are probably hypnotized by a distraction. But at the same time, you ever caught yourself watching a sporting event and becoming so engrossed in the event, you forget about everything else in your life. You become very engaged into what you're watching. Nothing's distracting you and nothing's making you think about work or personal. You're in the moment. That's hypnosis. So if you look at it that way, you have a better understanding it's not about being asleep or being unconscious or I'm going to put you in a trance and I'm going to make you sell better or I'm going to make you become a better leader or having better customer service. It's about becoming more aware of those thoughts when we need them the most. So those thoughts become your, if you will, software and they guide you where you want to be rather random thoughts or intentions that you really don't put to action or if you let doubt get in the way. And you already said it about believing it and achieving it. It's so true. So true of what we say. Even great athletes. If you listen to great athletes after performance, how often do you hear them say, I just, I knew I can do it. We knew we can do it today. I just put my mind to it. And even great people that are in business, they give the credit to their mind. I knew I was always going to do this. I knew we would be successful. I knew we would hit our quotas. I exceeded my expectations. All these thoughts and phrases and nonverbal responses are extremely powerful in business life itself. I, I, I so totally I so totally agree with you. And one of one of the things that's interesting and I'll plug your product a little bit. Um, I listen to your sleep has hypnosis tape or not a tape, I guess it's actually a digital recording. And I started listening to it, and it was very helpful framing my mind and helping me to clear my mind of the day. And then I stopped using it. And the reason I stopped using it is I could find myself going to bed and just thinking about the things that you had said before, and I just run myself through the same, the same rapport of the same process, just not having to listen, because I have developed that habit. Um, from what, what you're doing, and in essence, what I'm doing is self-hypnotizing, I guess, 
which I think people do all the time. Absolutely. The problem is most of the time they self-hypnotize themselves to be a failure as opposed to successful. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, really, it's really cool. Um, so how, you know, I'm sorry, because what is one of the most neglected elements in business and in life? You know, I've said it, and I think we'll go into more of it. It's the accountability factor. You know, I think that's a very strong statement that I think that's something we neglect to actually step back and really think about what those words are. Accountability is a very strong, powerful thing in business and life, and, it, and they both should be balanced out. You know, w at the very beginning, we start talking about relaxation and investing yourself. I don't think enough people, when I talk to them, when they come to me, when clients talk to me, clients hire me and say, hey, I've been talking about this for this, this group forever about these key elements, but they're not implementing them. They're not holding themselves accountable. They're letting those random thoughts or doubt get in the way, the economy, the environment, it's not the right time of the year, my client says we don't want change. They're letting those things get to them. I think one of the things that we neglect to do is hold ourselves accountable to stepping back and clearing our mind. And part of my technique, regardless of whatever topic or whatever you want to do, whatever your passion is, you have to step back and hold yourself accountable to invest in yourself. And, and you gave a great example. Uh, you brought that up about using the Sleep Better, you know, audio program. You invest in yourself. It wasn't you weren't looking for a quick fix. You weren't looking for a snap of a finger. You were looking for a way to retrain yourself and hold yourself accountable because what you were doing before wasn't working for you, and yeah. your mind only worked based on the last thoughts it had about it. So you were continually repeating the same, whatever it may be, that held you back from having a great. I can tell you exactly. I was thinking about what I needed to do the next day, what I forgot to do that day. I was feeling guilt for things that weren't complete. Uh, I was panicking that I wasn't going to be able to get everything done the next day, and it was nonstop. And and you changed the habit. Well, it, it, so. even my sales clients will say to me, you know, we have a great product. We have to invest in our people because without our people, there's nothing at all. And one of the things that we're finding about our people is they're not engaged. They're stressed out. They're, they're doubtful about their success, and already those things are holding them back from being successful. Although our product is great, we know it's great, but it means nothing without great people. And so when we invest in our people in training, in investing in our people to teach them to relax better, to focus better, or to reprogram their mind away from the negativity, we start to see results. And I think that's the accountability factor. There is no excuse. You cannot say, well, I'll get to it next week. Because how many times have we made a promise to relax or to inspire ourselves and we put those things off? We consider them luxuries and not necessities. Yeah. Okay. Let's bring this to business. Okay. People are going to want to know, how can I use this to make my business more successful? You know, can I hypnotize my customers into buying stuff? How does this take this into the business world? Sure. Well, we've already kind of gone there already, so let's go to that next level. We talked about investing in ourselves, leaders, our teams. You have to step back and actually take some time to really reinvest in what you're thinking about. Oh, it's almost like sitting in the audience. If we run through life of the old patterns and habits, we're only going to work that way. So let's talk about business. Um, if you look at the subconscious mind like a hard drive of a computer, and actually it's probably the most powerful, unlimited hard drive there is. I mean, the space in there, we just don't know how much information could be stored. But like hard drives of a computer, they need to be updated. The software does. I mean, we have these devices. We got them. When we every so often look at them to go for the update, regardless of the app and why. Because the update itself is a better way of working. Maybe something corrupted it. Maybe it. Maybe you have a new efficient way of selling or offering a new leadership skill or actually even a better customer service uh, product that you want to you know, introduce to your team. But if you don't update these things, they're going to only work the old way. Same thing with the subconscious mind. So when it comes to business and when you step back and you look for different ways to inspire your team and to motivate your team and train your team, you have to realize what you're doing in itself. And what you're doing, you're teaching your team to update their thoughts, their software. So regardless of what business you're in, 
uh, it doesn't make a difference. If you want to take yourself to the next level of success, you cannot make an excuse of anything else except really the excuse of you have to do it. You, you've got to just do it. You've got to step back and, and really put some intention, put some action to this. I mean, this stuff's not going to work if you go, oh, that's a great idea. I like this. He seems nice. But if you don't have the intention to actually put it to action, forget it. it it's just a waste of time. But it, I'm sure that a lot of your speakers are probably saying the same thing. You've got to get off the couch. You've got to get up off the chair. You've got to think differently. And by doing that, you're implementing new software in your subconscious mind, which then again guides you and it's become your best friend and not your worst enemy. Okay. On, on this webinar are people in the training profession. A lot of people are managing training departments or some trainers or some people. How do they practically do that? How do they take what you're saying and actually implement it in the workplace? It's a great question. I can't answer it all in one session with you here today. But I think one of the first things that we have to realize is that what we say to ourselves, I think you and I have been talking over and over again about just the whole fact of it's very hypnotic. Probably the same thing for everybody we interact with. Everybody's in our circle and su suggestion. So all these leaders and trainers and executives that are listening right now realize not only are the words that you say to yourself hypnotic, but to everybody else. I think you have to step back. You have to sit in the audience of what you're doing and realize how it affects you and how it affects others. And what happens? Like a sponge, they actually respond to you that way you want to respond to them. Uh, it's so true. It's so true. And uh, the term mirroring is, I think, appropriate here. And it examples make such a difference. And I think so many times leadership doesn't recognize how important their behaviors are. I think that's a great thing. Okay, let's bring this to customer service. How is customer service related to the subconscious? All right, well, let me, let me ask you, when you think of customer service, what do you think of? Like when you experience something that is fantastic, amazing, wonderful, what, what comes to mind for you? I, I sense and feel like I've been treated. I have been, uh, something has happened that has made me feel more special that someone had, you know, and this is kind of the interesting thing, made you feel like a better person. And I, in some ways, know that it's not genuine. I mean, when a waiter or waitress is really friendly with you, let's face it, they're looking for a tip or when you're going into a store to buy something. But it's, it's actually probably more when it feels really genuine and you can tell they took special interest in you. And they didn't just treat you like every other person. They treated you like an individual. And if I asked you about an experience that you had great customer service that you'd probably brag about, if I asked you about a restaurant or a store that you purchased something or an experience you went on with your family and you had the most amazing customer service, you would immediately remember that. You, you're, the, the recall of that is where? It's stored in our subconscious mind. Subconscious. And I'm going to challenge everybody listening right now, everybody listening and watching this video, I want you to think about the last amazing customer experience you had. And I think they all have a very familiar trait in common. It's about the experience. The experience itself, it becomes an experience. Customer service becomes an experience, experience of our thoughts, experience of emotion, um, of a feeling, of a smell, of, of a situation. Uh, you just said it made you feel good. Well, that feeling is an emotion, and the emotion is stored in our subconscious mind. It affects us. And, you know, it, it really does show you, though, and here's one of my secrets. I'm going to put it out there. We're going to get to it, we're going to, get to it early, Evan. Okay. If, if, if every word that we say to ourselves, every phrase, everything that we do is so powerful that it has the ability to hypnotize us, and then Think about what we just said about, you know, interaction with other people and training. If what we say to others hypnotizes others by what we do, then who is the most powerful hypnotist in the world? It's ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. 100%.
So as leaders and people watching this video realize that you are a hypnotist to yourself, you're a hypnotist to your teams, and then your teams are hypnotists to everybody they interact with. And the experience of customer service becomes a memory, it becomes a feeling, it becomes an emotion. And where is that coming from? It's provoked by your team, by your business, by your, by your whole philosophy and your culture. Now we can say culture of accountability of that experience. To me, that's extremely powerful. That's something we neglect to do. Even when I do a show and I'm on stage or I'm doing a keynote presentation, it's not about not necessarily the content, which is always probably the first, you know, first thing on the list, but it's about the experience and everything I do. From the minute I walk on stage to the thank you letter that I send my clients to the greeting of people after a program, it's about the experience. And that, I think, is what I've learned from great experts in customer service and for not forgetting about that emotion that we tap into. Is part of what you're saying as I'm listening to you here, it's the emotion or the feeling that someone who's giving good service feels about themselves? I, you know, I think where, so. Yeah. You know, so where you, when you provide good service and you feel like, wow, you know, I, I, look, at what I do is very different. It's not like I'm, you know, doing something for five minutes and then done. I mean, I, I have lifelong relationships with my clients. And, but I feel such a sense of goodness when I know I've helped. And I sort of maybe hypnotize myself to feeling that way. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think totally when, cool. when you get into a culture of, of, of customer service where it's your brand, it's who you are, it's who you work on, uh, it's, it, it's, it's your product married with your team, not only are you making your customers, your clients, your guests feel very special and you're allowing them to experience who you are, your product, your brand, and your service, but in turn, by giving that great service, you're making yourself feel good. And it becomes yeah. fun. I mean, Evan, yeah. you've known me a long time. This is not a, this is not a job to me. I love doing this. I love speaking about it, but I also know the passion you have about what you do. I think you and I connected because of that passion, because of the interaction, because you love what you do. You put a lot of passion towards it, and it shows. And what do you get back? A great experience that you can go home and tell your family and friends, I love what I do. Well, look, look here, here is an excellent example. You know, I have hired hundreds and hundreds of professional people to come to speak to events. And you're the only one I have a relationship with. You, you know what I'm saying? Where we talk occasionally, not about business. I mean, because of you and your attitude and how you do things. And, and, and I think it's what makes you, you special. And, and literally every time I talk to you, I always feel better, no matter what the conversation's about. Thank and, you. And um, so anyhow. The few, I, I'm going to give you a hug through the, through the computer, but no, I, it's, it's so true, though. I think that um, it, when you, again, it's part of life. I think it's the connections and relationships we, we, we create, but it's experiences. And, and we, we are also very much attracted in business and life to, to good experiences. And I think that makes, that's, that's, what, that's a very profound thing in, in the subconscious mind. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, brand loyalty. How do you bring the brand into this? How do how do how's brand loyalty uh, brand loyalty program part of our thoughts? Well, I, I think that's a, it is, it's a perfect question, Evan. Especially after we just talked about customer service, you can have two stores right next to each other carry the exact same product or same service, or you could be calling somebody on the phone, offering somebody something that so they can get even quicker, you know, and cheaper. But brand loyalty is about the experience too. Yes, the product needs to work and needs to fulfill the service or what the need is of the customer. But I think that we purposely are brand loyal to the experience itself, and that experience goes back to customer service. You know, every day in my life, I'm traveling, and I'm, I'm involved with customer service. I see people do things, and I relate, and I go, okay, they're the hypnotist, and look at, the, look at what they just created, the negativity or the frustration, uh, even just the smallest thing at the grocery store I noticed. Uh, just the, the way somebody is handling something negatively and also something very positively. And I think we go out of our way to be brand loyal based on the experience. And again, 
not to be repetitive, but the experience comes from the, if you will, the hypnotic experience itself. Yeah. It was so special, and why would I go out of my way? This morning, I was with somebody, and we were just talking about cars, and he goes, oh, I got a new car, and he goes, oh, that's really cool, and, and we, we got one about a year ago, and I said, well, where would you get it from? And we turned out it was the exact same place, and the exact same person sold it. We had no connection of how we got to that person, except the fact is, the reason why he went to that person, the way I went to that person, was because of the brand loyalty of many other people and the great customer service. Could have gone out of our way to go a little bit farther, a little bit closer. We did it because of the experience. And then we started talking about why we like that person. We never talked about the cars. We never yeah. talked about how they ran or how much they cost or do we like the car. We talked about the experience and the brand loyalty. Yeah. Well, I... I, I I think you're totally right, and I think you're really saying something here too, which is each individual person's their own brand, right? Sure. Absolutely. You've got a, you've got a, you got the company brand, and you have your own brand, and you know people will go out of the way. I I, I remember many many years ago when I was in retail, I had one one salesperson, uh, I'll say his name because it's all good, Anthony Pellegrino, and he didn't take a single up in the store because he was constantly busy with people coming in and asking for him. And he would go out of the way and he'd go set up someone's stereo or TV after work. And, you know, he became friends with all his customers. And, you know, he was a one man selling machine because of, of who he was. He was his own, his own brand. So to your point, okay. How is, how is hypnotist techniques an element in our business and in our lives? But we've, we've actually touched on some of those things, and I think that when we go back to the power of thought, the power of persuasion, uh, selling and offering solutions, we are creating, an, uh, you know, itself a visualization of ownership. Uh, whether you're selling an individual product or a service, why people buy, why people go to you because of brand loyalty and customer service is is based on, I, I think, I'm sure, a, a correlation of many things that we do in business and life. And it's becoming more attentive towards those things and becoming more aware of what those things, so you repeat them over and over again because they're obviously working for you. And again, not to be repetitive, but, you know, it, it, it's so much of what I, you know, it's, it's this whole correlation about updating our thoughts, updating our 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 abilities, and you, and you talked about each and every was one of us being a different brand, but then we take all these different brands, meaning different people, and we bring them together to build a culture. Yeah, absolutely. So let's take this maybe a different direction. What are some of the worst things you can say about yourself and others that have an effect on your subconscious? Oh, that's 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 a great question. And this is, you know, when I work with sales teams, this this comes up all the time. When I work with leaders and, and leaders out there, listen, this 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 is such a strong statement. You know, uh, how when I ask them, tell me a little bit about some of the negativity. What's what's some of the doubts? What are the things that they're saying to you when you're asking them, what's going on? Why isn't it selling? Why aren't our customers buying? What what's going on in our environment? And the same things keep you repeating. It doesn't matter what company. And it's so funny because I have a lot of companies go, well, this is what's so, so unique to us. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not unique to you. Everybody has the same issues. People, say, uh, people saying negative statements. Um, our, our product just isn't, isn't the right time of year. Um, I could never be as successful as that person over there. Um, I just don't feel it right now. Uh, nobody's buying. We've always done it this way. All those things that are said within by the water coolers, on emails, on text messages, they have a very profound effect on a culture. They spread like a virus. And Evan, let me ask you, have you ever walked into a room of smiling people and you weren't in such a great mood, but you were starting to smile and you asked, you wanted to know what was so funny or what was, what are you all smiling about? And yeah. vice versa. Well, you were, and, and yeah, you walked yeah, it and, and as you're talking, I'm sitting here visualizing people in my mind, right? And people I know, I just don't like talking to them because they bring me down, because they they just have such a woe is me, or you know, you bring up something, but what about this and what about that, and and, and it just sucks the living energy out out of your body. Yeah, absolutely. Um, How often have you been to the grocery store and you you see somebody you know they're there? 
and they're negative, and you purposely just push the card, hurry, we gotta go, we're going the other direction. And then you, you see somebody that you know is positive and inspirational, and you love to be with them. Regardless of what you talk about, you're like, oh, it's just, they made me feel good. And well, I'll tell you something interesting. When I go to the grocery store, I look at the cashiers, and I know I'm gonna have a long way one where I look for someone who's smiling, and I'm thinking at least this will be a pleasant time in the line, versus looking at the grumpy person who obviously had a, had a bad day. Yeah, I'm gonna so give you I'm gonna, money, so would you please please be grumpy to me? Yeah, I wanna go to the person that's gonna smile as I'm giving them money. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you the question that this person, and I use this person not as an individual, but as speaking for all of the people that generally focus on life through the negative filter of life, say is, well, I need to be practical, I need to be real. If I'm always happy, I ignore reality, and then I'm, and then I'm, you know, missing things that are really important. And the fact that I'm looking for the bad is good. What do you say to those people? Well, um, the people that say I can't, it's not possible. I, I get even more challenged because I don't put them aside. I don't dismiss them as though, well, they're negative and they can't change. I believe they can. I believe everybody's programming because we put it there in the first place, can be changed. And it really does start to, you start to realize, let me, you start to realize as talking to that person that yes, they are fulfilling their, their own doubt by winning to fail. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. By saying I can't do it, it's not possible, um, my time is up, uh, I'm too old for this, that's the younger generation, you've already, one at failing and yeah you might as well move on to something else but if you teach them that process that thought process because they look at me people go what are you talking about i already won to fail well you move on try something else to fail it because you've already convinced yourself right now it's like losing weight i can't lose 10 pounds well you're right move on you've won move on now could you lose one pound during one week by eating healthier and making better choices and the average person will go yeah i can do that well after 10 weeks because you made better choices you didn't lose the weight you maintained a productive way of losing and eating healthy you'd be losing weight by eating healthier you changed the way you thought about the process and your mind are heard and accepted it so when somebody says to me or a team leader says hey my people are just all negative then we got to go and teach them new ways of thinking. We got to teach them about how to change that software. And that's my job. And that's what I get challenged yeah. with. I don't want it to be easy. I don't want to go in and say, oh, well, you guys are great. Well, no. How do you become better? How do you implement things? How do you get up and step up and hold yourself accountable? And it even goes back to the beginning of this conversation, Evan, about you saying, I listen to your program, I listen to it over and over again until I retrained myself and you heard my voice or my suggestions, which now helps you have a great night's sleep. It, yeah. and, and, and that's what we're doing. I mean, it's the same technique, whether it's oh, no, and sleeping you're, you're, or, or doing something else. Your example is so right because I went years and years and years with the mantra, I just don't sleep well. You know, that's who I am. I, I am a person that doesn't sleep well to now I'm a person who gets a good night's sleep. And, and, and it, it's a huge change and it was literally done by changing the reprogramming of my brain. And business uh, is the same way. I mean, sales is the same way. Leadership, customer service, branding, it's all about what are we doing today and not thinking about yesterday or overthinking tomorrow. Yeah. I should tell you, I did beg you to make that program. You I did. don't know how many times. <laughs> but anyhow, I hope it sells well for you. <laughs> it's done very well. It's actually one of the most popular items now. And um, I, yeah, it's really kind of funny because it's one of those things that I even learned. I actually, when I was writing that program, I learned even how to have a better night's sleep. And people joke with me. They go, well, what do you do? I go, well, and if you ever run into me, ever meet me on the street or whatever it is or at an event, come up to me. On my phone, yes, I have my own programs. And I do yeah. listen to them. I listen to them. I mean, you gotta, we're, we're all creatures of habit. And so making sure that software is not corrupted. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You have a sort of a, a thinking of take time every day, to intentionally manifest and nurture positive thoughts. Tell us more about that. 
It's, 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 that's, a, that's a great way of wrapping up everything we just talked about because when our mind is relaxed, we're clear. We put our intentions more into action. And in doing so, when our mind rewrites that script, it looks for ways to fulfill that reality itself. It works really hard based on the programming. You know, in my keynotes, I talk about using a, or making a, a subconscious grocery list. You ever gone to the grocery store and forgot your grocery list? Sure, oh, sure yeah. we have. Yeah. Those of you that have been to the store, some of you maybe have never been to the store, who knows? Uh, but <laughs> when it comes down to it, if you make a, a list and write on a piece of paper, Studies have shown that those people usually get everything on their list, and they rarely add items that weren't on the list because they're trying to stay true to the programming, to the thought yeah. process. No, it's a, you're absolutely true. I mean, a good example for me is at the beginning of the day, I'll write a to-do list for the day, and then I'll just do everything, and I never look at the list, and then they have done it all um, because I, I, I programmed it. You know, we're running out of time. I'm going to ask you a question because I think it's an important question. Because people are listening to you, and I think, I think they should be liking what you have to say. If, I, if, I, if I'm a, working in a corporation and I say, gee, I'd like you to help us be more successful with this in our entire company, how do you help companies? How do you work with companies? It's a great question. And... Uh, it's, it, this is probably the most important thing. Is every company is different. Every team is different. Every leader is different. Every philosophy is different. So I don't go in there to shake things up and say, hey, you're doing it wrong. I go there to take the culture that it is and how to, how to enhance what they're already doing. So my programs can range from a combination of fun that leads into wellness programs, fun that leads into sales programs and unlocking your selling ability. Uh, you know, platinum level executives, teaching executives, you know, the people that lead all the time. Who's, if you're taking care of 10 people or hundreds of people or thousands of people in companies, who's taking care of you? So what I'm leading into is that every program I do is customized based on what my clients are looking for. And I go in and really talk to them. I'm on the phone with them. I'm when, a, when a call comes through after we find out what they're looking for, the call is set up for me to talk to them. And so they, because I'm the one who's, I'm the brand, I'm the person that comes, um, I find out what they're looking for and then we come back with several different ideas and options that might work for their company uh, as far as best fits for their, their event or conference or even on-site coaching. Um, you know, in the last couple of years, we have found that more clients are going, hey, we're not waiting to that once a year annual meeting to get everybody rah rah up. We realize that we need to create that culture of ongoing attention and awareness towards our teams. So I have programs that, that are implemented on site, not at the convention, you know, at the resort yep. somewhere, but they're on site there. They can be anywhere from once a month to every quarter to even, you know, um, you know every other month. It, really, it, just, it just really depends. So I, I don't come in with a canned speech or a feel-good message. It's really taking, find out, what are you looking for? And, 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 you know, yep. and, and then offering you the right fit. And um, then you see the results, and I'm really happy. Oh, that, that's fantastic. Okay, we're out of time, but I know everyone wants your free offer, and we appreciate your free offer. Um, so please uh, share with us. So we have a, a whole bunch of programs that, we, we, that you actually have listened to over the years, Evan, from reducing stress to unlocking your selling ability, even losing weight, or even playing better golf. But I'm really excited about a book that I did that's called uh, Update Your Internal Software your subconscious mind. We've kind of been talking about a lot of the content from the book. Uh, it's a very simplistic book, but don't take the simplicity for granted. It's really about stepping back and holding yourself accountable to relaxing, becoming more aware of your thoughts, and, and actually getting in, putting them to action. The book is available online at my uh, website. I believe you can see it right there. The URL is right there. It's uh, rickycalman.com. Uh, if you go to my online store, go to where the book is, the update your internal software, choose the download version, and if you use the promotional code that you see on the screen, which is update2015, it will remove the fee, and you can download it absolutely free. It's a fantastic offer, and I, I just want to tell you, I have the, the hard copy of the book, and I mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. I have a son who's a very good skier, he's a professional skier, and 
honestly, one of the things that I think really helped him the most was your book. Because it helped him frame his attitude. And when you're there, and if you saw what he did, and he goes off these massive jumps, you can't go off a jump where you're literally going to land 100 feet further down with doubt. Right? If you're sitting there thinking, you know, I'm going to fall, I'm going to fall, um, you're going to fall. And thinking about that, and your book is more than just that because it's really more about goal setting and, all, you know, a, a lot more than, you know, the simplicity. I really do recommend the book for everyone here. It's a, it's a great offer. Uh, I, again, appreciate you coming. I think you have just such a great message. And I encourage people to give you a call and talk about how you can help them uh, in, in, in their businesses because attitude and, and thinking positively, in my opinion, is one of the single most important parts of being effective in business. But no one, you talk about it, but no one else is talking about it. And that's why I think it's innovative and it's about leadership. So thank you very much for being on the program. We really appreciate it. Thank and you. And thank everyone for, I got to say this off the cover. Thank everyone for listening. If you like this show and you have friends that you think should hear it, but it's only available for a short time, you can buy the downloaded version of the whole series. So if you like the show, you want to share it, by the download. If you can't listen to them all, which I understand because it's hard, get the download because every one of these interviews are full of impactful ideas like this one. And these speakers, as Ricky mentioned, are great, really great people that are sharing ideas and treating you to helping you be better at what you do. So again, thank you, Ricky. Thank everyone for listening. Thanks, Evan.